Good evening, and welcome to Full Moon Matinee. I'm your host, The Detective, bringing you the finest crime dramas and film noir from the golden age of Hollywood. Tonight's picture is from 1960, Cage of Evil, starring Ron Foster and Pat Blair. Now, this picture admittedly does not feature a particularly star-studded cast, okay? This is a low-budget B-film that was largely intended to be double-feature matinee or drive-in movie circuit material, okay? But you know, sometimes these pictures can be fun to watch in their own right. I mean, if it was Saturday night and you're on a date at a drive-in movie theater, to the degree you're actually watching the movie on a date at a drive-in, <laughs> okay? But, but this would have been very typical of the type of movie you might have seen. Now, Ron, Har uh, Ron Foster, and he's the one playing Detective Scott Harper. He was in films from 1956 to 1986. Now, while he has a long filmography, about a third of it was in uncredited roles. He was only in six films in which he had a lead or co-lead. Uh, films like The Music Box Kid, Operation Bottleneck, and Secret of Deep Harbor. Uh, those were a few of them, uh, and the rest of them were really just small bit parts, or at best, maybe a little higher build with the rest of the supporting cast. Um, his real forte in acting was in TV work. He did a lot of uh, appearances in episodes of TV series. Now, the rest of the cast here in the picture, I'm going to discuss after it's over. This is a particularly short film. Uh, the runtime of the actual film is only an hour and 10 minutes. As such, I am going to forego my customary intermission and just save the rest of my discussion for after it's over. Now, the picture here, it's about a frustrated police detective who is repeatedly passed over for promotion, but he is assigned to pursue a suspect's girlfriend from a diamond robbery. The two of them quickly fall in love, and he begins to decide that maybe she and the diamonds are worth more than his career. So, from 1960, Cage of Evil. Let's roll the picture. This is the Civic Center in Los Angeles, California. For 62 years, I've watched it grow from a bunch of scrubby government buildings into the great thing it is today. My name is Melrose, Inspector Dan Melrose. I've watched a city grow and I've watched a lot of men grow, but nobody can ever learn all there is to know about people. That's why I was so wrong about the young fellow with me now, Detective Scott Harper. I uh, got a note in my box. You wanted to see me. Had a very interesting call a few minutes ago. Bradley from the commission. Bradley? 
Oh, uh, yeah, another uh, beef about the department, I suppose, huh? No, no. Maybe the commission boys are taking tranquilizers now. It was all sweetness and light. He asked about you. The promotions? You must have done pretty well in the test. Well, there's nothing on the bulletin board yet. The list will be up in a couple of days. But from the way Bradley talked, looks like you might make lieutenant this time. Oh. Well, uh, what'd they want to know? They wanted my recommendations. Yeah? I thought you'd like to know I gave you a big send-off. <sighs> Thanks a lot, Dan. You know, uh, after being passed up twice, that's, uh, that's pretty good news. Yes, I know. Look, Scotty, my recommendation isn't the last word, you know. Yeah, I know, I know, Dan, but uh, it goes a long way. And if I got high marks on the test... Melrose no, no, speaking. Uh, just a minute. Okay. Delmar and Company, Wholesale Jewelers, 1430 Spring Street, room 123, right? Hey, that was a pretty big hall. Yeah. Yeah, we'll get right on it. Scotty, you better take this one. I'll put Murray Kearns on with you. What is it, Robert? Quarter of a million dollars, uncut diamonds. One of the jewelers was slugged. He's in bad shape. Why well, has this uh, Delmar's insurance company been notified? Yeah, we'll be hearing from him. You better get over to Delmar's right away. Take a fingerprint man and a photographer with you. All right. I couldn't know it now, of course, but I was sending Scott Harper on the last case he'd ever investigate for me. Scott had always been one of my most efficient men, smart, and with all the guts a cop needs. But there was more to him than that. It was something that could explode. And I guess down here in the wholesale jewelry district where the robbery took place is where the fuse was lit. Mr. Delmar, do you have any idea how long he waited in this closet? Well, how could he get in in the first place? I've spent thousands to protect this room. Steel doors, automatic locks, the finest alarm system, and how many keys do you have? Only three. Mine and my two gem experts, Merrick and Mr. Franson here. No one else is ever allowed in this room. It's never even unlocked during business hours. And that leads you, doesn't it, friend? What? Well, you're crazy. Take your hands off me, you stupid police. <laughs> Scotty, take it easy. Nobody could get past that alarm system unless they had a little help from the inside, isn't that right? Okay, okay, we'll get to that later. If you knock his teeth out now, he won't be able to talk at all. Claude Francine has been with me 20 years, Sergeant. I trust him as I trust myself. Maybe you trusted him one year too long. Scotty. <laughs> Look, uh, you said when the thief opened that alley door, the alarm didn't sound, now. Did he switch it off? No. Could your system here be defective? Well, not likely. It was inspected only last week. Who by? Why, why the company? A regular inspection? Well, I... Why, no, it wasn't the time for it. Mr. Delmar, did you check with the company to see if they'd sent him in? Well, I was busy at the time. It didn't seem necessary. Better check it out. You said the, uh... Stolen diamonds. They just come in the mail. Do you always receive your big shipments of diamonds by regular mail? Well, it's customary. You see, a courier or a heavily insured package is an open invitation to thieves. A small, innocent parcel, plainly wrapped, or has proved to be much safer. Unless somebody knew it was coming. Well, no one in the country knew that except myself. Somebody on the other end. Where it came from, they could have supplied the tip? Yes, it's, it's possible. Hey, Scotty. The power line. Been taken off the terminal. Been covered with some, some invisible lacquer. Maybe a clear nail polish. Then it was screwed back on. Killed the whole system. Well, that's how it was done. Thief probably came in here and hid in the closet hours before you got here. That way he'd be able to choose the exact moment to steal the gems. What do you mean by exact moment? Well, if he'd waited even a few minutes longer than he did, my men and I would have had the stones cataloged, graded and weighed, and been able to identify them. It'd also been too hot for a big-time fence to handle. Exactly. 
But if stolen the precise proper moment, the stones become almost as negotiable as a quarter of a million dollars in currency. The information obtained by Scott Harper and Murray Kearns at Del Mars was fed into the tabulating machines in our records department. Everything here? As much as we could dig up with the tab machine seems fairly complete. Okay. Send in Scott Harper and Murray Kearns, will you? Probably been, Dean. Good enough, Tom. So Pacific Insurance got it in the neck again, huh? Yeah, that crook. He waits till the diamonds are in Delmar's office, so we're hooked under blanket coverage. Not much to go on here. All the data we had to feed into the machine was the height, the build, and the M.O. I brought along some stuff from our jewel files. You might like to take a look at it. Hello, Tom. You here again? Hasn't that company gone broke yet? I'm ready, Scott. We'll look at Dean's cards first. It isn't on the M.O. cards, but from what you boys tell me, this bird had to be a real expert. So? Well, it's my opinion that there's only about five in that pile that had the brains for the job. Okay, which five? Sure, that looks like our best bet. Well, you can scratch him. Remember that teletype a week ago? They got him in Folsom. Flip Bassett. He, uh, he left the country, didn't he, Dan? That's what they say. I'll check with Washington. For now, he's out. Oh, well, that leaves three. Sorensen. Romack and uh, Puntello. Huh? Romack. I had him in my hot pile, too. Hey, didn't we try to nail him once before? We got a tip that a girl named Holly Taylor was his longtime girlfriend. Who's she? Dance hall hostess. Only a small club called the Bone Wheat. Uh, you know, I'd like to have a look at this Taylor, babe. That can be arranged. I've got another angle, too, Inspector. Martin Bender. The fence? The biggest fence. Hides behind a legitimate business front. He's the only one who's big enough to handle that much money in hot stones. Now, it seems to me that whoever pulled this caper has got to deal with Martin Bender. Yes, that's a possibility. But we'll touch all the other bases, too. Man each on Sorensen, Romack, and Puntillo. Murray, uh, Martin Bender's your baby. Call Frisco, have him put a cover on his mail and tap his phones. You better get up there yourself tomorrow. Scotty, take Colton with you and check out that, that uh, Holly Taylor. I'll buy a steak. Expense account. I'll take it. Inspector Melrose speaking. I see. Thank you. We aren't just hunting for pretty stones now. We're after a murderer. A jeweler, Merrick, the one that got slugged, he just died. This was the Bone Wheat Club, where Kurt Romack's girlfriend worked. It was the kind of a club with fancy prices. I guess this Holly Taylor had a fancy price on her, too. Romack was strictly a big-time operator. Good evening, gentlemen. Dinner or just a drink? Just a late snack for me. Can do? Can do. This way, please. How's this, gentlemen? Fine. Romack does all right? Uh-huh. That's quite a little warmer up here for long winter evenings, huh? Yeah, but Tom, uh, with Romack's income, 100% tax-free, why she even bother to hold down a job? Good cover. She does all right, too. Yeah, she does, and, uh, and it shows. Doesn't it? You know, Scott, this is uh, going to be tough duty following that around. Just following it around is not going to do us any good. I wonder what time they close. Look, can I order something for me, will you, Tom? I want to make a call. What do you want? Anything. Scott realized Romack's girl was smart. It was going to take more than a casual meeting to get next to her. That's why he called and asked me to have one of our boys come over and pose as a drunk. By 2 a.m., when the club closed, Scott was set to move in on Holly Taylor. The 
drunk we'd sent over didn't waste any time. Am I glad to see you, lady. You know, you saved my life. You know that? I beg your pardon. Oh, well, cabs aren't running this time of night. I was afraid I was stuck here until you came out. You expect me to drive you? Uh, unless you want me to drive. Buck, go on, get it. Wait a minute. Hey. You're a real doll, you know that? Thanks. <laughs> Look, I got a better idea. I know a joint that's open after hours. Supposing just you and me go over. Go Get over. out of here, you creep. Look, nobody calls me a creep. Get out of here. I call a cop. Call it. This time of night, get over, lady. What's the matter, miss? Is he bothering you? Oh, that's the understatement of the week. Look, run along, buster. All right, Live your own car. Line. Now, wait a minute. Quit. I uh, hate to hit a drunk, but he didn't give me much choice, did he? Oh, I thought the damsel in distress bit went out with the bustle. I'm very glad you showed up. Well, I think he's had it. Too to big a night for him. He won't give me any more trouble. Well, good night. Wait. How did you happen to show up? Oh, I was just uh, waiting for a cab over here. What happened to your friend? Oh, he had to leave a little early. Why didn't you leave with him? I, uh... Come to think of it, you didn't eat anything or drink. <laughs> you, uh, you want the truth? Well, I was hoping to get acquainted with you. But I, uh, I couldn't think of anything to say. I'm not very good at that. So I just left. Can I give you a lift somewhere? No, you don't have to do that. You don't owe me a thing. I know, but I'd like to. Really. Well? Come on, get in. What's the matter? We're just thinking the uh, drunk did me a big favor. I really ought to thank him. Come on. Inspector Melrose. Hello, Chief. Barney. Yeah, it worked just fine. He just drove off with her. In her place, I think. Well, where to? Oh, the, uh, uh, <laughs> wait a minute. I have the key here. The, uh, Ratner Hotel. You know that one? Mm-hmm. You, um, live out of town, then? Yeah. Yeah, I just come in and out on business. You know something? After hours, this town of yours can be the lonesomest town in the country. Well, you must have some friends here. No, just uh, guys I do business with, that's all. Alice, any messages for me? Not bad. Not bad at all. You know, I think I prefer this to the Ratner. What's your pleasure, sir? I thought so. What made you think you could get to first base like that? My business, baby, you uh, have to know right when your customer is ready to buy. And uh, you thought I was ready to buy? Honey, you already bought. Scotch or bourbon? Scotch. Little 
Was I so obvious? Yeah. I didn't make a move. You gave me a lift. You brought me up here. Just one thing that kind of worries me, though. What? A girl like you should need me. You know the only reason I took the chance? Because you're from out of town. If you lived here... Ah, uh, 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 I see. You're married, huh? What, are you separate? Are you engaged? <laughs> Just what else does that leave? Sorry, I can't explain. You can go now. Or you can stay and finish your drink. But if you stay, no questions, because there can't be any answers. Deal? Signed and sealed. What's the matter? You know, you could tell me your name. They just don't make sense downtown. Passing up a man with your record. Number three in the exam list. What's a guy have to do to get promoted? Hmm. Somebody must have that answer, Murray. I sure don't. Well, the inspector doesn't like it any better than we do. Yeah, sure he doesn't. What, do you take it off? Yep, Frisco to put a tail on Martin Bender. See you when I get back. All right, that's a lot. Thanks. They wonder why they can't get enough good men to join the department. So that's him, the guy who did the slugging. Near as Delmar and Franson could describe him. Franson thought his nose should be a little longer. Delmar liked it this way. Morning. What do you got, Ozzy? Composite. The one who didn't hide his face. Look familiar to you? No. Okay, Ozzy, print up a few thousand regular distribution and then put it on photo wire at the big towns. Right. You really hung one on Barney's jaw. He's still punchy. She wouldn't have bought a thing less, Dan. She's nobody's fool. You make any progress? Yeah, it's still on this uh, thing with Romack. She lives by herself. Alone every night, no friends. Except you. I'm from out of town, just here a day or so on business. Then you think we're on the right track? Yeah, I think so. Uh, she's waiting right now, and I, uh, I don't know how long. Okay. And we'll cover the club while she's working and set up a 24-hour stakeout where she lives. Give me the layout. It's a Waverly Apartments, number 2C, up on the second floor. There's a big picture window on the court, Dan. You could stick a couple of men in an empty apartment across the court. Yeah, I can arrange it. What about her phone? All uh, calls go through the switchboard. Well, it's something. We'll put one of our gals on the desk. Anybody else come up with anything? No, at the moment, yours seems to be our one lead. Okay, I'll uh, stick with it. Scotty. Nothing else you want to talk about? No. The promotion list? I told you I recommended you, but there's six men on the commission, and I guess the recommendation wasn't enough for all of them. I don't know if I can explain it to you, but I got to try. No, you don't? I know. You're sore. Maybe you got a right to be, but it's not going to help. You see, just being high in the examination list isn't enough. I've done my job, haven't I, Dan? Better than most of the guys around here, but that's not enough either, is it? Well, you're a rough guy, Scotty. Maybe rougher than you know, and the department likes other methods. What do they want to use on these hoods? A little psychology? Shall we make them promise to be good boys? Is that what they want? Now take that thing manhandling the diamond cutter at Del Mar's. He signed a complaint. It won't get anywhere, but still, it is a complaint. And he could have had it coming. I've been right more times than I've been wrong. Yeah. 
Well, we like our men to be ambitious, Scotty, but when they promote a guy, they figure on as being head of a department someday and using methods that they want. Now, think about it. You're young, you've got plenty of time to figure out how to meet the commission boys halfway. And there'll be plenty of other examinations. Well, you want to know what I think, Dan? I've been on this for seven years. Seven years I've been learning how to be a good cop. I think I should have used all that time to learn how to play a little uh, old footsie with the big brass downtown. Who knows? I might even be chief by now. All the signs were right in front of me if I'd only been able to see them. The things Scott had stood for for seven years were falling apart. Any messages for me? Uh, for whom? Where's Alice? Well, she was called back east. A relative was sick. Tough break for her, but it was a good one for me. Oh. I'm Miss Taylor, 2C. No, nothing. Thank you. You're welcome. With one of our police women on the switchboard, Romack couldn't contact Holly Taylor by phone without us knowing it. Anything else you uh, desire, ma'am? Oh, this doesn't make much sense, does it? What? What? Does that bother you? Yeah, no warning, no nothing. Things shouldn't happen this fast. It doesn't give a person time to think. Look, baby, you did all your thinking before, and you were ready for some guy to step in. Not just any guy. I've never been that lonesome. I'm glad of that, anyway. How ready were you? Uh, I'll let you take the Fifth Amendment on that. I'll forget I asked oh, Don, look, it's not that at all. I had a deal I was counting on getting in town today, that's all, and uh, I lost it. Oh, Scott, I'm sorry. Does that mean you'll be leaving sooner than you thought? May. Oh, oh, we're a couple of prize squares letting ourselves get hooked like this. All shook up and it can't lead to anything. It already has. Let's not kid ourselves, Scott. You don't know anything about me. I don't know anything about you. Believe me, things can't get better. They can only get worse. All right. Then we'll worry about them when they do. But not now. You can relax. I'll take the phones. Yes, it certainly could be something, Chief. Look, could you send us some good mug shots on the next plane? I'll show them to Delmar and the Cutter, and if they say yes, I'll send a man down to bring him back. Okay, fine. Got him. Kept me Ray Dean in record. Ray, this is Melrose. Give me everything you have on an ex-con named Mick Borden. What's going on? Maybe a break. Okay, fine. Hey, the El Paso border guards grabbed a guy that looks like our drawing. He was trying to slip out of the country. He had over 8,000 in cash on him. And when they checked his prints, it turned out he's done time for robbery. He goes under the name of Mick Borden. Sounds interesting. Now, somebody at Del Mar's will only finger him. And if we can place him in L.A. the day of the robbery... You he... may have your murder. But what about my stones? How about you, Scotty? Making any progress? Yeah, I'm doing all right. Uh, there's no contact yet, but she's waiting for one. You know, it's a strange thing. A girl like that can gravitate toward a hood. A crook. What makes them go for guys like that? I wouldn't know. I'm no extra. Uh, what was that number? D-A-14355. Five, five. Okay. 
Message for you from the Ratner Hotel switchboard to call that number. Said it was important. Holly's? Yeah, it's not our home phone, though. It's uh, from the club. <laughs> Sorry, we're closed. Well, I'm a friend of Miss Taylor. Oh, that's all right, Dewey. Dewey, I don't suppose there's any coffee in the kitchen. Not this early. None of the cooks showed up yet. But I'd be glad to run down the block to the drugstore and get you some. Would you, Dewey? I'd really appreciate that. Uh, will you get me one, too, huh? No trouble. I won't be long. The idea asked me to come here. What's wrong with your plan? Last night when I got home, I saw the light go out in the apartment across the court. Oh, yeah? Oh, Scott, I turned out my lights and looked through the curtain. There was a man watching me. Well, did you, uh, did you call the police? No. No, I couldn't. Oh, Scott, they're a reason. They're the only one I could turn to. You're leaving town? Day after tomorrow. And this, this is the real thing, the two of us. Honey, this was real after the first couple of days, you know that. Oh, I hope so. Because I want to ask you something. What? Take me with you. Take <laughs> Wait a minute, honey, this... I, I know you may be married or engaged, but it doesn't make any difference. Scott, I have to get away. And I can't ask you the reason? Not now. Not yet. Scott, I can tell you this. For me, it's a matter of life and death. Scott. It'll work. We want each other. We'll make it work. Look, honey, this was pretty fast. I didn't expect... Do you think it is a trick? It's Romac, isn't it? Romac? You know about Romac? How could you? Because I'm a cop. You walk out like this. Why? Because I might tell Romek who you are and blow your case. Sit down a minute. I'm looking in the beginning. I was using you. That's right. This, but not now, baby. Honest, not now. That's the truth. So help me. Those men in the window, they were you. Yeah, that's right. And the drunk the first night. It was Barney Sawyer. He's from the office. How are you going to break it to them, officer? What? That you blew your case by falling in love with your number one suspect. Baby, it doesn't have to be that way. Oh. Look, suppose we don't say anything. Just go on like nothing had happened, huh? I cooperate with the police. Help you catch Romac. It's our best chance, isn't it, honey? Yours and mine? Ooh, that's no chance at all. Kurt isn't stupid. He'd know in a minute I'd fallen for somebody else. And once he knew that, he'd kill me. Well, honey, he couldn't very well. Not from jail, he couldn't. They need hire a done. Kurt has money. Plenty. I told you it was a matter of life and death. Scott, I meant it. Scott, have you ever killed anyone? Now, what kind of question is that? I think you know. You want me to kill Romack? you have any better ideas. 
Look, baby, I've been a cop for seven years. I made a lot of habits in that time, and those habits, they don't break easy. What's the matter with you? I can't just uh, jump over to the other side of the fence like that. Side where all the romics are. Yeah, that's right. Scott? Suppose, suppose it were in the line of duty. Kurt resisted arrest or something. It'd still be murder. Nobody'd know. We'd know! All right. All right. Forget it. And me. And Romick. You'll never see either of us again. Dewey's coming with the coffee. Nice knot. There's cream sugar in the bag. Something wrong, Miss Taylor? He, he forgot his change. Oh, you keep it, Dewey. Thank you, ma'am. I don't know how much liquor Scott put under his belt in the next 18 hours. All I know is it was enough for him to make his decision. You want me to leave the bottle? Why, I uh, look like I need it. You want to know something, friend? In this world, there's just two kinds of people. The ones that need it and the ones that serve it. And I just serve it. Hey, how about that? Something, isn't it? They just walk over to the green sedan at the supermarket to make a routine check, and boom, a guy blasts him with a shotgun. No warning, nothing. One dead, one paralyzed for life. Will you answer me something? Guy must be out of his mind to be a cop. Well, there's just a lot of other ways of making a living. That was it for Scott. Funny how a man's whole life can change in a few minutes. He was locking himself in a cage of evil. What's here? Hello, Scott. She had any calls? No calls, no visitors. Uh, bon Ton delivered a hat box. What was that? Well, nothing we'd care about, just a hat. Hmm. Was she in? She came in about an hour ago. Drake's been tailing her. Okay, uh, you tell him and Lewis I'm here, will you? Will too. Who is it? Stepping up to me? How? Oh, the hat box? Okay, all right. You want to tell me about it? Any reason why? I Show Dean Lee! I've been thrown off already. What do you think this is? Easy for me? Easy for you? What about me? No word from you. Not knowing whether I'd ever see you again, or whether you'd decide to have me arrested. And to top it all off, I walk in and find a message from Kurt. Easy. Our only chance. Oh, and that 
That's what I want. How about you? If it weren't, would I? Would I be here? Okay, baby. What's the setup? Is, uh, is Romack going to meet Bender? You know about Bender, too? More or less. Yeah, Bender's in on the deal. I'm to go to the edge of town and run a motel. I get two keys. One for Romek, one for Bender. There'll be three keys. One for us. You have it, me. When Kurt receives his key, he'll let me know the time and the date. I'll send Bender his key and the date. That's all. Yeah. So they both show up at the motel, switch the diamonds for the cash, and it's over inside of five minutes. That's simple enough. How are we doing? Does Romack carry a gun? All right, when he walks in, he'll probably suspect a trap anyway. So when he... when he resists arrest... Suppose he doesn't resist. He won't be in any position to say whether he did or not. Scott? What happens to the diamonds? Well, they go back to Del Mar's. The insurance company's off the hook. Suppose they uh, don't go back. Insurance rates go up next year, maybe a uh, hundredth of a cent. But what you mean is that we might take them, huh? You've thought about it, too? Yeah, I've thought about it. Bender would just as soon deal with us. We have to live, get out of the country, maybe. Yeah, you're right. And the department's not even sure it was Romack who pulled the job, so if they uh, don't find the diamonds on him, it won't matter too much. You know, it's real funny. Since I've been on the force, I've been around hoods and thieves and killers. Real stinking part of the human race. I always wondered if uh, any of it rub off on me. Now I know. The composite drawing we'd put on the wire finally got results in El Paso, Texas, where a small-time hood named Mick Borden was identified from the picture. The Texas police had turned Borden over to us. I want a lawyer. As soon as you're booked. Right now, we're just having a quiet little talk. Will he talk? After Delmar identified him, he opened up a little. And said what? Go ahead. Tell Scotty who bossed the heist. Why should I take the rap alone? It was Kurt Romack. Well, that's uh, going to help a little knowing who we're after, huh? Borden, right now you're facing a murder charge, all by your lonesome. You're going to need every break that anybody can give you. So what do you want from me? The stone. A quarter of a million in diamonds and Romack. Where are they? How should I know? I told you before, we work for Romack by the day, strictly cash and carry. After a caper, he'd pay us off and we'd split up. I wouldn't even know where to begin to look for him, or the stones. Following Romack's instructions, Holly went to a small motel on Ventura Boulevard in Los Angeles. The plan was to rent a cabin that Romack would use for his meeting with Martin Bender, the San Francisco fence who was supposed to buy the stolen diamonds. Yes, madam. You want something? Mm, the manager. I'm the manager. Just try to keep things neat for the customers. Those gardeners you get nowadays are so lazy. Now, I uh, saw your sign, vacancy. Mm -hmm. Well, now let me see. I can give you a choice of three. Number two, number six, number 11. Of course, I don't think you want number 11 unless you're a big family. It's for housekeeping, that kind of thing. Well, uh, could I see the other? Mm -hmm. Wait right here. I'll go get the piece. Huh? 
How many nights are you going to be wanting it for? A month. Whole month. Hmm. Very nice. Well, we're pretty proud of our place. We try to keep it bandbox clean. You'll take it, uh, Mrs. Brent. My uh, husband's stationed at the air base. He's flying in and out all the time, so we'd like a place to be... Oh, you don't have to explain to me, honey. I've been running motels for a long time. That isn't exactly what I meant. Oh, uh, would a week in advance be all right? No, I'll pay you for the month. That'll be $65. There's one thing, though. I'd like two keys now. Oh, certainly. I'll uh, bring the other one right down to you. Okay, where is the motel? It's on the highway, a couple of miles out of town. The number is 10920 Ventura Boulevard. Ventura. Okay, now don't forget to have the other key made, honey, and uh, let me know as soon as you get word, okay? All right. Goodbye. The next step was for Holly to mail identical motel keys to both Martin Bender in San Francisco and to Romack. On the established day, both men would come together at the Los Angeles Motel. Meanwhile, my man Murray Kearns was working with Lieutenant Ivers of the San Francisco police watching every move made by Martin Bender. Seemed like I had every angle covered. I was wrong. Yet, I just got a call from Murray in Frisco. He thinks that Martin Bender is getting ready for a trip. Well, any idea where? No, Murray doesn't know. But Bender made a big cash withdrawal from his bank today. Cash, huh? Well, uh, maybe enough to pay for the stone. Yes, at going underworld rates. You know, it's still my guess that the girl is the go-between. Now, from now on, don't let her out of your sight. I won't, Dan. It's tomorrow, 2 o'clock at the motel. Scotty, I'm scared. Honey, don't you worry about a thing. This time tomorrow night, it's, uh, it's all gonna be over. This was the big day. The day when Kurt Romack came out of hiding for the meeting at the motel. A smart criminal like Romack never leaves anything to chance. His gun would be ready if he needed it. Hello, Kurt. What are you doing here? It's supposed to be just Bender and me. But uh, I had other ideas. If this is a frame. Fire. Sounded more like a shot to me. But it couldn't have been, could it? Does he have them? They're ours now, Scott. Nothing can stop us. We can walk out of here free. Not quite. Take it easy, Scotty. Yeah. What? 
What happened to Bender? We had a cover on his mail. When somebody sent in this motel key, I decided to check it out. Then he, he isn't coming, huh? No. Well, I... I guess that just about does it then, huh? Yeah, I'm afraid it does, Scotty. He's a cop? Yeah, he's my partner. I'll want your gun, Scott. You better turn around and face the wall. You know the routine. I guess I don't have to ask why you did it. Dirty end of the stick at headquarters, quarter of a million in hot stones, and quite a package. He had to do it. Kurt resisted arrest. He's your friend. Maybe if we split the diamonds with him. The diamonds, you'd better give them to me, Scotty. Why'd you have to show up, Murray? Why? God, what are we gonna do? I don't know, honey. I. What's going on in there? Who is it? The manager. Now look, mister, I know I heard shots. So you better open up or am I gonna call the police? It's all right, ma'am. I'm a policeman. Everything's under control. Here are my credentials. Now, will you do me a favor, please? Call Inspector Melrose at headquarters and have him come over here right away. Would you do that? Well, all right. Thank you. Hey, come on, you've got to get out of here quick. You go to my car. It's right over there. Where's Park? Nobody will see you. If and when I get clear, I'll come and get you. Shall I take the diamonds? No, no. We might get picked up. I'll, uh, I'll hide them here someplace and then come back later for them. Scott, what about you? Well, I, uh, I think I got a chance. Come on, make it quick, baby. Yes, I'm the manager, Mrs. Melton. Which one is it? Number six, right this way. And I finally found out through the tailor, babe, that Romack was coming here. But I, uh, I didn't expect to see Murray, Dan. I got here a little too late. You were right outside when you heard the shots? Yeah. When I threw the door open, Murray was falling. I got Romack before he got me. What was Murray doing here? How did he get on to Romack? I don't know. What about the stones? I looked through his clothes and all around the room, but I, I couldn't find them. Well, I guess he didn't have the stones on him then. Tom Colton won't like that. 
then. I didn't want to shoot Romack if he'd give me a chance, but after Murray... I... Nobody could blame you, Scotty. Poor Murray. I know how close you two guys were. If anybody was going to get his killer, he'd want it to be you. I've been going crazy. But okay, he uh, went for my story, for now, anyway. What'd you tell me? Romack shot Murray. It was Kurt's gun. I will verify where the bullet came from. And we got away with it? Like I said, for now. It could blow up in our faces any second. That's why we're gonna leave the stones right where they are till it's safe. Now, you call that motel manager and tell her to hold on to that room regardless. And another thing, honey. I can't see you from now on. I have no official reason. I see. But we won't wait any longer than we have to. Make it soon, hon. I couldn't stand being alone, not now. Congratulations, Lieutenant. Well, thanks, Tom. And how about that quote from the Commissioner? Promotion long overdue. How true, eh, Dan? That's right, Scotty. You should have heard your friend Murray chew me out when they passed you over. I wish he was here now to let me off the hook. Yeah. Well, uh, Sergeant said you wanted to see me. No, Tom Colton does. It's about those diamonds. Uh, what Scotty? about the diamonds? Well, now, Mick Borden, he didn't get them. Kurt Romack didn't have them. Martin Bender didn't buy them. What do you think happened to them? Well, I don't know. It's, it's got me stopped. The way I've got it figured, there's only one person who could know where those diamonds are. The girl. Who, Holly Taylor? That's the only lead we have left. You got any ideas on who ought to take over for you? What do you mean, take over? You pulling me off the case? Well, the girl reads the newspaper. She knows now you're a cop. Look, Dan, I still know her better than anybody else does. I know her habits, who she knows, where she spends her time. You may be right. Besides, nobody else could even get near her now. She wouldn't trust her own mother. All right. Stay with it for three more days. If you can't make any headway, I'll assign a new man. Okay. Well, Tom, uh, you got any ideas? Yeah. I suppose we can forget about Bender, for the time being, anyway. After reading those stories about those diamonds, I don't think you'd touch them with a ten-foot pole. No, it's the girl we concentrate on. Just the girl. Mm-hmm. You'd think if a perfect crime could be committed, a trained policeman like Scott Harper could do it. But there are two things no criminal can count on, human failing and luck. You know what a chance you took calling me and picking me up like this? What else could I do? I called the motel, like you said, to hold the cabin. And? The manager said I had to vacate tomorrow because of all the trouble. Tomorrow? She'll refund the balance of the month's rent. Isn't that generous? Yeah, that means I have to get out there today and pick up those diamonds. Let me have the key. Scott, maybe we should leave them there. I mean, if we're no, caught... Oh, no, no. We've been through too much to give up those stones now. Well, we got one break anyway. He's off Bender. You'll have to get in touch with him right away. Bender? With all the trouble, would he still want them? Yeah, I'm guessing he will. He wasn't involved. The insurance company's off his back. All right. I'll try. Be careful, Scott, please. Better let me out of here. So far, Scott hadn't made any mistakes, so you couldn't call that human failing on his part. But the part about luck, that's something else. Scott knew that the plumber's truck meant bad luck the minute he saw it. What are you doing here? 
Chambermaid complains the water didn't go through fast enough. Probably clear up by itself. That Mrs. Melton wants everything up to scratch. in that motel room all the time. In the trap of the basin? Why else would a stranger come in, knock the plumber cold, and then take off the trap himself? Are you sure that Scotty hasn't reported in yet? Yes, sir. I'd like Scotty to keep out of touch so long. I'd like to have him along. He might have some ideas on who the man working with Polly might be. Well, we can't wait. I'll leave work for Scotty to follow us out to the motel as soon as he checks in. Holly? Yeah, it's Scott. Why'd you wait so long? I waited until I got to the airport to call. I'm there now. Why, did you have any trouble? Yeah, a little, but I got him. Oh, good. Look, look, the plane leaves through San Francisco in about 25 minutes. Can you make it? No, but we shouldn't be seen together anyway. Now, look, take the plane. Get everything set with Bender, and I'll be there in a couple of hours, okay? Oh, Scotty, I wish you were going to be with me. It's okay, honey. It's just a little while longer, and uh, the worst is over. You just keep remembering. Barney called to tell me Holly Taylor was taking a plane for San Francisco, I knew the end of the trail was near. It meant the girl was going to Frisco for the meeting between Bender and the man who had the diamonds. You're sure your friend is coming? His plane's already landed. He'll be here soon. Well, I hope you appreciate the chance I'm taking, dealing with you, young lady. You'll make enough out of the deal. Will you just relax? He said he'd be here and he will. It's one of the boys from L.A. What are you doing here? Well, I spotted the Taylor girl at the airport. The inspector told me to take the plane with her and see what she was up to. You know who she's in there with? Martin Bender. Well, last I heard, Barney, he wasn't involved in this. He's on it up to his ears. Oh, this is Joe Harrison, Van Iver, San Francisco. Hi, Scott. Scott? Yeah. It's funny, uh, wouldn't you think Melrose would have told me he was sending you? Barney, I'm still on the case, you know. Well, what's going on here? What are you doing? Stakeout. Stakeout? Yeah, the whole area's covered. We're waiting for the guy who took the diamonds from the motel. Well, how do you know he's coming here? We managed a pipeline in the Bender's office. Yeah. Bender's confidential secretary. He's got to show Scott. Holly couldn't have those diamonds. So what else could she and Bender be waiting for? Quite a kick for you, isn't it? I mean, uh, you being in on the finish of this? I mean, after all, you've worked on this case longer than anyone else. Yeah, that's right, Barney. I have. Look, I uh, better let somebody know where I am. Huh? You can use my car radio. All right, uh, where is it? Right down the block there. Thanks.
Yeah. What? What did you say? Repeat that. You sure of this? Who is this? But what friend? What? Hello, hello, hello. Who was it? What's the matter? A trap. A trap? Out. Out, hurry. Uh, just a minute. Who was that on the phone? A trap. I let you talk me into a police trap, a stakeout. Now get out, you hear? Get out! Miss Taylor. Scott. You're under arrest, Miss Taylor. Why? Any talking you want to do, do it at headquarters. Inspector Melrose uh, wants to talk to this girl right away, so I'll uh, take her to the airport. But we can drive you. It might be faster with the siren. There's no need to. I uh, have the U-drive. Where are you going, Barney? With you, why? Look, you, uh, you better stay here and make a call to Melrose and tell him we're on our way. Besides, he uh, might want you to follow through with Bender. Yeah, he might, but... Keys in the pocket, honey. What went wrong? Barney, the uh, drunk that night at the club? Yeah. He spotted you at the airport. Oh, the phone call to Bender. That was me. It's the only way I could think of to get you out of there. That stakeout was for me, honey. Hadn't been for Barney, I'd have walked right in the trap. But what are we going to do now? Well, first we turn in the car, then I have two tickets to Mexico. Non-stop. Got a couple of bags in the trunk to uh, help us pass for tourists. You think we can make it even now? Why not? Our luck's held this far. Hold just a little while longer. Remember, honey, you uh, never surrender on a double murder charge. Just don't do that sort of thing. I'm sorry, Scott. For what? The way things worked out. My eyes were wide open. I said Scotty was smart. He'd been smart enough to walk out of that trap at Bender's and now he was on his way to Mexico. It's too bad a man can't always be smart enough to fall in love with the right woman. Tom Colton brought the news to San Francisco headquarters. It was the kind of news a man never wants to hear or to tell somebody else. Well, first Scotty, now you. This is my day for surprises. Yeah, well, your day's just starting. That plumber, the one that they uh, found slugged in the motel, he came to and identified the man that hit him. Scotty Harper. Scotty! Why, you're crazy, Tom. I'm sorry, Scott, Barney, that's the way it is. We were all slugged by the news. Gotta be the last one in the world. How'd the plumber make the identification? From the newspaper pictures? The day they gave Scotty his medal. The metal. Oh, brother, there must be a moral here somewhere. Then Harper and the Taylor girl didn't get to L.A. Not that we know of. And Scotty must have had the diamonds on him when he walked into our stakeout. Yeah. He probably did. And now they could be anywhere. 
Who are you calling? For you drive stand at the airport. If Harper turned in the car there, we can find out if they took a plane. Give me information. Scott and Holly had made it. They were at the Mexico City airport. It had been an uneventful flight. Everything had seemed to be working out just right for them. All Scott and the girl had to do now was to get through customs. Almost got it made, honey. All has customs and hello, Mexico. A few more feet, honey. Through that door and uh, we're home free. That's the way Scott Harper died. His hand reaching out for something he could never have, something he wasn't meant to have. I wish he could have known that before it was too late. Welcome back. Now, I'm just going to come out and say this. I really didn't care for the voice of the narrator. You know, the guy doing the voiceovers through the picture. There's just something about his voice that just didn't sound right. It sounded a little off. You know, we expect those voiceovers to come from a loud, booming voice of God type of voice. I just didn't like that at all. And yeah, there were a few times and a few scenes the acting was a little stiff and wooden, but such is to be expected for this type of picture. Did you catch the goof? That scene uh, where the cops come to the house and Harper's trying to push Holly out the window. Now, when she was in the house, she was wearing what you could tell was a colored dress. But when she landed outside the window, you know, outside, and then started to run away, now her dress was coal black. <laughs> I'm telling you, continuity assistants need to pay attention to things like that, you know? But we, we got to see something I want to point out here. Uh, we saw it a few times in the picture where people would get in and out of a car from the passenger side, you know, you know, from the passenger door, and they would simply slide over to the driver's seat. 
Well, back then you could do that because these cars had bench seats. You know, they weren't the bucket seats that we're accustomed to today. So, you know, how it looks like they just slide over so easy. Yeah, it's because they had bench seats. And speaking of, got to get to my cars here a little bit. That convertible that Holly was driving around, that was a 1960 Lincoln Continental Mark V. That car weighed over two and a half tons. It was almost 19 feet long. And at the time, it sold for around $7,000. Now today, that would be closer to seventy to 75000 And if you could find one today in excellent condition, that would fetch right at around $100,000. Uh, Harper's car that he was driving around, that was a 1960 Mercury Montclair. So tonight's picture, co-starring the Ford Motor Company. <laughs> now, Patricia Blair, uh, and here she was credited as Pat. Throughout her career, she was credited as either Pat or Patricia. Uh, but she was the one playing Holly. In the opening credit scroll of tonight's picture, she was credited as Pat Blair. Probably, uh, most of her career uh, in acting was in television work, and her best remembered role was she had the role of Rebecca Boone in the TV series Daniel Boone. Uh, it aired on NBC from 1964 to 1970. Now, Robert Shane, uh, he was the one playing Delmar. His best remembered work, again, was in television. He had the role of Inspector Bill Henderson in the TV series The Adventures of Superman. Now, that one aired in syndication from 1952 to 1958. Helen Klebe, she was the one playing Mrs. Melton you know, the lady running the motel. Her best remembered role, she had the role of, it was a recurring role of Mamie Baldwin, one of the Baldwin sisters from the TV series, The Waltons. Now, us kids of the 70s, we certainly remember that one, huh? <laughs> the Baldwin sisters. And you can't mention her without having a little sip of the recipe. <laughs> now, there was another scene here. It, it was very quick that you saw him. Uh, the scene where Harper meets the other detectives that are behind the bushes at that stakeout, and he's quickly introduced to them. The one detective that was introduced as Dan Ivers, that was Ted Knight best remembered for his role on, he had the role of Ted Baxter on the Mary Tyler Moore Show. That one aired on CBS from 1970 to 1977. So each of these actors did have, uh, in, in their portfolio, so to speak, each of them has, you know, at least a little small claim to fame. Now, if you like pictures like this, want to see more, click on the subscribe button so you're notified of future releases up in the notification bell. And you can always just type Full Moon Matinee in the search bar or click on the Full Moon Matinee icon down here and you can find all the prior releases. And as always, I thank you for spending the evening with Full Moon Matinee. Stay with us as we continue our further investigations into the long-lost evidence of Hollywood. Until next time.